What's up everyone, we are back and we are checking out another one of the Roscoe's. This time we're going to jump down to one of the most popular ones, which is the Roscoe 7. Again, with the changes across the whole board, um, this one has gone to a plush 140mm suspension. Has those 29ers with 2.6 and a wide drivetrain. So you are getting some key features here, which you want. And let's uh, do a bit more of a deep dive into what these features are. So remember, if you like this kind of new video format, let me know below and subscribe for more. We will be doing more rides and reviews as we go along. Seems like a good convenient way instead of the standard talking head video to actually do it something like this. So you get to watch a ride and listen out. Let's get to it though. The Trek Roscoe 7 for 2022 has had all the geometry changes that the Roscoe 9 has as well. So definitely check out that video and the first video of the series of about the whole Roscoe's um, so you can keep up to date with what's going on. So as with the 9, 8 and 7, they are all with that alpha gold aluminum this time with the tapered head tube, which is the same as last time, but it's nice to have. They do have the ISCG mounts, so you can get some cool little chain guides and such on there, and a threaded bottom bracket. The big thing with this one as well is it still has that Boost 148 on it. That is something really nice in the rear end there, so you'll get the true through axle. No more of that little QR axle. It's going to be a big improvement, a lot more stiffness and control from the back end in comparison to the older style. The fork this time is 140 mil travel. It is the RockShox Recon Silver RL, so this is the solo air spring, so it does have the air controls. You will be able to set this up based off your weight, based off Trex online calculator which does work really well. You just type in your weight, type in your bike, and it tells you exactly what the recommended settings are. Obviously, this doesn't work for everyone, but it does definitely work for a lot of people and for a great baseline. This is where you should have it set at. They're not just making this stuff up. The max compatible fork, as with the Roscoe 9, is a 150 mil, and that is something a lot of people do with these bikes but now that they're at 140 instead of 120 it will be interesting to see where they'll put their money so like i said through axles all around you've got the 15 mil through axle on the front and a 12 mil through axle on the back and this has bontrager's switch through axle so there is a an allen key essentially built into the rear end which will control the front end so easy taking off the wheels you've always got a tool with you and it looks really really clean Again, they have the Bontrager Line 30 rims, which are tubeless ready, and this one here does come in with tubeless sealant from the factory, which is really cool. So your shop will set that up fresh for you when you're ready to ride. And again, it's just a little cost, which is built into the price now, and it's going to make it life a lot easier for you. No need to carry around a pound and a half with the tubes, especially in these bikes. It's a lot of weight. You can cut a lot by just going straight to it and having it all set up. You don't need any additional costs. I think it's nice they're doing this. Everyone who mountain bikes pretty much is tubeless now. I'm still 50-50 whether it actually makes that much of a difference, but it is nice. You are not getting any pinch flats. I don't have any pinch flats, obviously. You're tubeless, but... You've got to deal with the redoing tubeless every year. So now you've got that cost of maintenance and you've got to remember to do it. And sometimes you have to do it a couple times a year. So it's something to take into consideration. The tires on this thing are the Bontrager XR4 team issue, which is really nice. So that's the 120 TPI. It's going to have a fast rolling strength. It's going to have a fast rolling speed to it, which is one of the big difference between a 60 and a 120 TPI. You can feel how much faster it rolls. It just is a nice tire, and it is the 29 by 2.6, as I said earlier. They do state that the max uh, tire size is a 2.6, but depending on the brand, I, I'd like to see. It'd be nice to do some testing, see if you could squeeze in a big old tire in there. That being said, not many tires come in much bigger than that until you get to those kind of goofy, you know, stash style bikes. This is just a Dior 12 speed, so it's going to be superbly fast, really reliable. It does come with the long cage to it, so it does come with the 51 tooth, but with the long cage, you can switch that rear end out to the 52 if you wanted. I think it's normally a little unnecessary in a lot of range you'll never use. But if you are doing some steep, steep climbs or really long ones where you'll need to save energy, 
that is a nice option that it comes with straight off the bat. It is Dior all the way through, so that's the chain. Everything is that M6100, so everything will line up really nicely, work really efficiently. The biggest chain ring on the front you can fit is the 34 tooth, so that's kind of nice. Um, you will be able to get some good top speed out of that um, because you've got that 10 on the rear as well so it's a good combination you'll be able to really fly along with this little bike here which is pretty impressive to uh put a, a 10 and be able to have a 34 in the front is going to be some fast pedaling paces so even if you're in those flats you're going to be able to really get those 29s rolling and it won't be anywhere near as slow as potentially the old Roscoe's were. This is really going to be a fast trail bike. As with the Roscoe 9, it has that transex post with the varying sizes depending on which model you get. So the extra small and small, it's 100 mil travel. With the medium, it has 130 mil travel. And with the medium large and above, you are getting 150 mil travel which is a lot like it makes a huge difference going from like a 125 or 130 starter to a 150 it's pretty big with the new frames they are also saying that you will be able to fit a larger dropper post in there so it would be nice to see some exact measurements once they're in see how big we can get could you fit uh, a 170 inside of a medium large can you fit a 150 inside a medium can you fit a 130 inside a small and extra small? And is it just depending on the rider size? That would be the limitation. The rider size is the big thing you got to take into consideration with a dropper post. Is the seat post going to be too high? And that's just something you got to keep an eye out for. The handlebars are again 780 mil wide. They are the Bontrager Rhythm Comp. So not as fancy, but it still works. It's an alloy one, 31.8 instead of 35 mil. Um, and a 50 mil rise so pretty minimal but the big the huge only on the extra small and small it's the same thing but only 750 mil wide which makes sense obviously if you're short you probably don't have gigantic wide shoulders the brake is really the only downside um, overall in this bike it is just the mt200 so it's a so it is just the double piston brake it works it has some good stopping power it's on a lot of bikes so it has to be reliable i think it's on the fuel x5 you know, it's a good brake, but it's nothing fancy to it. It's 180 mil rotors on the front and rear center lock. So they are upgradable if you wanted. You'd have to buy the adapter for the brake or switch them out. Nothing fancy going on there. With this bike, you are just over the 30 pounds mark at 30.84 with 13.99 kilograms. And that's pretty solid. Like that is a lightweight bike. We're just cutting the weight of these bikes down and down and down. I remember when 32 pounds was light and 30 pounds was good for a full suspension carbon bike. And now even the aluminum bikes, they're coming down and down. But that's the benefit of going with something like a Roscoe over a full suspension. The Fuel X5 is going to weigh more than this with just the additional parts and mechanics that go into it. Plus, you will be paying more. Although the 2022s have not been released, I would not be surprised if the 2022 Fuel X5 was not more expensive than the 32 it's currently at. It'll definitely be interesting to see with all the G with all the changes of the Roscos. It will definitely be interesting to see where the Fuel X line goes. Um, it's put the Roscoe 7, which was one of our most popular ones, into this superb um, price range of two grand Canadian. And it's really going to allow a lot of people to have a crazy good bike. Like, realistically, this is insane. 12 speed, drop post, 140 mil, progressive geometry, which is slacked out, and a steep head tube angle. Um, you are going to really be able to, whether you're brand new into mountain biking, but really want a mountain bike, or you're actually a pro, or you know exactly what you're going to do, you are going to have fun on this bike. It's got the durability. It's got the part spec. I mean, Dior used to be a crazy high-end kind of out there. Then there was Dior XT, which only the kind of fancy rich guys had. And then there was the XTR, which was near impossible to get. But the way things are going now, Dior has somehow slipped down to this kind of somewhat entry-level bike. And I mean, it's hard to call it entry-level because it's not under $1,000. But you get a lot of features for it. I mean, this is a bike you could buy and literally own forever with no changes to it it will do absolutely everything uh fuel x 9.8 will do and it'll do it really well you are really just missing that rear suspension which is more for comfort you do get a bit of braking benefits but 
you know, I really think they've done a good job here. I love the colors. I mean, that teal with the speckled black and the multicolored letters, like that is a really nice looking bike. The Miami green we've seen before, but adding this little speckled black to it is just adding this nice little touch. And then the classic matte black um, is going to look super clean. The multicolored teal one, that looks really good on this bike. The speckles add a lot to it to fill out some kind of void space. It'll be really interesting to see how well this bike sells. I personally would recommend it to a lot of people. I mean, it's not a crazy price to pay for a bike, but you get a crazy part spec like six years ago this would have been insane this would have been one of the top level bikes out there and i think you won't regret it if you get it so if you found this helpful or excited about the roscoe 8 video definitely subscribe below uh, comment if you're gonna get this otherwise guys we'll see you out there good luck